I'm John Hanna for CDTV.net in New York, and we have Greg Womack, president of Womack Investment Advisors, joining us at Edmond, Oklahoma. Hey, Greg, how are you? Well, good morning, John. Good or afternoon. Afternoon, to you. afternoon <laughs> those of you in New York time. Yes, I'm doing well. Thank you. All right, sir. Um, so, yeah, the market's a little bit, uh, well, you know, there's been some uh, downside uh, um, scenarios right now in the market. Um, so uh, what, what do you have for us today with regards to uh, market report? Well, yeah, we're seeing a little bit of a, a, a turn back today in the markets. If you, based upon um, you know, May 23rd, about 12.30 p.m. Eastern time, the Dow's sitting about 169 points off at 12,342. And the NASDAQ's off about 52 points at uh, 2751. Then we had the S&P about 20 points off at 1313. You know, a lot of concerns um, over in the euro eurozone. Uh, the dollar strengthening, and so um, also, you know, some global concerns about you know the economy slowing down, China trying to slow down their economies, and um, and so we're seeing a, a pullback. And of course, you know, we haven't had a really a significant pullback in quite some time. So the old saying of sell in May and, and go away. Well. Uh, that may be coming about here as we finish up uh, the month of May. Here we are, the 23rd. So I see, John, I see support level on at least the immediate term on the S&P around uh, 1,294 range, just below 13,000. Excuse me, 1,300. Here, and currently we're at 1,313. And then the next one is going to be the 200-day movement average. Um, on the SP, which you know, if we see a pullback from the 1300 level, we could you know we could test that 1250 range um, on the S and P. Which, if you think about it, you know, 1250 uh, where we're currently at, you know, that's roughly, you know, uh, let's see here, roughly about a about a 6% correction since last Friday. So even if we pull back to the 200-day moving average in the general index, the S&P 500, um, not a significant event, but it, it would be a nice little pullback and something we probably need. Um, so don't be surprised to see the markets pull back at least that far. And if it breaks the 200-day moving average, which is that 1250 range, then then you know the floodgates could open a little bit, and we could see a further downturn, and, and then you get in support levels around uh, 1170 on the S&P. So, you know, if if you're an investor, you just kind of be patient, build your watch list, um, and if you've got good profits, then put some good tight sell stops in there on your holdings. As far as the general markets, you know, the, the, the domestic equities last week were kind of slow motion. We had a shallow decline for the third straight week. Um, as the economic data suggests, the recovery is, is probably slowing down some. So the S&P was uh, lost just over 2% since May began. And, of course, the anxiety over European sovereign debt and, and made headlines. And, of course, investors continued to flock to the U.S. Treasuries. As far as the last week's headlines, John, the economy, the housing market continued to suffer in April. Uh, the Commerce Department said housing starts were down 10.6% from March, and building permits, which is an indicator of future construction activity, fell 4%. And then after a March increase, industrial production remained level in April. And the Federal Reserve Board said materials and non-industrial supplies saw the only increases for the month, while business equipment was the biggest contributor to the 5% increase from the previous April. Then we also took a look at, look at the uh, Federal Reserve Open Market Committee. Their notes and uh, it, their minutes showed that when the Fed begins unwinding its supportive measures, the first step is likely to be a decision not to reinvest the proceeds of maturing securities and treasury bonds. And most of the members favor raising short-term interest rates before starting to gradually sell the Fed's portfolio of mortgage-backed securities. So a little bit of a in look into the, the crystal ball of the Fed is, is perhaps uh, as we get past the June 30th um, of the stimulus that 
interest rate short term may start to, to edge up a little bit. We also had a political game of chicken, which kicked off last Monday as the nation hit the current 14.3 trillion stealing on the level of debt that the Treasury uh, can issue to pay the nation's existing bills. Uh, we had a series of accounting measures, including Monday's Treasury decision to suspend investments in two pension funds for federal employees. This may buy some time for Congress to come to some agreement on whether to raise the debt limit or not. Then we had speculation to begin how, how the arrest and the resignation of International Monetary Fund Managing Director Dominique Strauss-Kahn might affect the European Union's financial problems. You know, the IMF is part of the bailout mechanism set up for the troubled EU members and is currently in discussion about how to deal with Greece's ongoing debt problems. And the SEC took on implementation of the provisions of the Dodd-Frank bill requiring stricter supervision of credit rating agencies. Their proposed regulations would require better disclosure about ratings and also including how a rating was arrived at and any third-party findings about underlying mortgage-backed assets. The SEC would also be able to penalize an agency for violating conflict of interest provisions. Then lastly, we have the International Energy Agency warned that unless all rich countries increase production, high energy prices could set back the global recovery. So as we look ahead to this week, John, and as we go into a I believe the extended weekend for the Memorial Day weekend, we have Thursday's revised estimate of economic growth and Friday's numbers on consumer spending will provide fresh fuel for debate over the state of the recovery. We also have some key data releases, new home sales on the 24th, durable good orders on the 25th, and then we have a quarter one GDP revised estimate on the 26th and lastly, personal income and spending on the 27th. So the old saying, as, as I started this interview with, is that you sell in May and go away. Um, this is kind of the first weekend of the big vacations. Schools are coming and, and closing out. Uh, kids are going to be happy. School's out for summer. Uh, so you really want to take a look at your portfolio, tighten those stops, and begin building your watch list as you see opportunities if we see a pullback in the markets. That's Greg Womack, President of Womack Investment Advisors, joining us from Edmond, Oklahoma, and I'm John Hanna for CDTV.net in New York.